And here we are again. I'm back this week. Uh, hopefully we have sound. I've double checked and triple checked everything. So let me put a message in chat in case people are watching. If you don't hear sound that you'll let us know. Yeah, I just remember those problems. We had it last week too. Anyway, I was gone for a week. I thank very much for Kyle filling in while I was recuperating. And that was a fun week. But we are back in the regular course of Barovia tonight. We, when we left off last week, they had entered Berez. And they had found a lot of rather creepy things going on. Now, we are missing Sylvia tonight. Sylvia, as the uh, thing begins, first of all, she hears various slithering sounds and creepy sounds in the brush as you guys move forward towards the Iltiziara uh, Manor. And um, uh, she backed out, and she has retreated into one of the cottages behind you because she doesn't want to confront what she's doing. This is too much like some of her nightmares that she's had in the past. Nope, S nope, I'm out. Yeah, basically she, she, is, she, has, she has decided to go elsewhere. And there we have our videos. I think we're all up and functioning now. So we are able to go. So, as we left off, Brush was beginning to move around you and you began to see things starting to slither out of the, the moss and creeping growths that are all about you, the ivy and the moss and everything that's just overgrown in this whole area. And not only do you hear things at your feet, but you hear burbling of things coming out of the mist rising from the swamp as well. And ahead of you, as you look ahead, creepy crawlies are coming out of the water and the little mossy islands. And it's crawling with all kinds of insects centipedes and and beetles and all kinds of things are coming out of the growth around you and a buzzing begins to fill your ears as you are uh, doing this as you're looking around you you begin to hear all kinds of sounds and they are closing in on you they are encircling you all around you we wandered into Merkedite territory. Pretty much. And... Good thing, the good thing that I popped us up out of the water last game. Yep. Otherwise it might have gone even worse. We will... Nah, we're fine. ...immediately roll initiative as four swarms of things surround you. So everybody will roll initiative to start with. The DM has had it with our ship. <laughs> and uh, up here. Already. Just as a reminder, I have an advantage on initiative rolls. Initiative rolls because you're a barbarian. Yep. I will put these in order, and we'll see what's going to go on. Hey, I had my guy targeted. How did I not get added again? Just I actually again and change it. Uh, I'll don't do anything. I'll just add. Okay, that, that's fine. Right, I got it. And you're you should be 23, right? Yep. Yeah, you got. I it. just changed it. Very good. Thank you very much. Let me do the order again here, so we have got it. There we go, and you, you will be first. Now these swarms are about 10 feet across, and they're crawling under you, around you, through you, over you, 
basically you do not have to target an individual insect or snake you only have to target area. the swarm itself so you are just targeting an area around you don't worry about measuring for it it is under your feet okay uh so i see two swarms of snakes one swarm of bees or hornets and then what's that other one is just general just insects crawling insects of all kinds scorpions and centipedes and beetles mm, and, and I, I, mosquitoes i really don't know which one i should go for because they all sound horrible <laughs> I'll, I'll go for the uh group of snakes that's on our right side i will fly into a rage and Blood Spear one hand is this one. And I will uh, uh, extra attack? Or I forget. <laughs> is it. What is it that I have? Extra attack. Yeah, it you do extra an extra attack. attack. Okay. Whenever yeah. you take the attack action on your turn, you can add one additional attack. Alright. Ooh, starting off good tonight. Yeah, use up all your good rolls so you don't have them later. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I work. <laughs> so you are attacking the right hand snakes and those both hit uh, and then some uh, so you did 10 and 22 damage so basically in a swarm of probably 60 or 70 snakes 20 of them pretty much are down right off the bat you managed to wipe out about 20 of them nice and that ends my turn. All right, the two sna uh, uh, snake swarms move in on you. The one on the right will attack at Alexander and the one on the left will attack at Victor. And we have two of these. <laughs> All right, the one on the right rolled 24 against Alexander, which I hits. I definitely don't have 24 AC. So you took five piercing damage and 13 poison damage for a total of 18. And the- I uh, assume there's no save against that poison, right? Not in this case. Uh, wait, see. Okay. Wait a minute, maybe there is, hold on. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I need a DC-10 con. Okay, you take half the damage, so you only took 6 poison for a total of 11 damage. And Victor, your AC is higher than this, so he, the snakes swarm around you, but um, aren't quite sure what you are as they approach you, and pull back and you manage to miss their attack. And the they're either uh, sensing the vampire or they're sensing the druid, one of the two. <laughs> I missed that. Then. Yeah, exactly. And the wasps move in on Epotus and attempt to sting him. Awesome. I'm the only one that wasn't attacked with that. Well, we've still I got insects, attacked. but they're a long ways insects. from you. They'll probably go for Dirac. I don't know why uh, my armor class is only 16, it's supposed to be 19. Well then corrected, um, we, roll 20 has a habit We gained a level of... at the end of the thing. Yeah, and, but that uh, shouldn't have... add, And we didn't add our shield back to it or something. Yeah, I was wondering why I was only at 16 when it used to be 17. Double check your equipment, because if you have equipment equipped, it will default to the equipped armaments that you have rather than what's in the box. So make sure that your armor that is showing equipped under your your item list is matching the other. That will sometimes reset it. Uh, what level should we be? Eight, seven, which are you? I'm eight. Um, I've still got seven. I can fix it pretty quick. Okay. Anyway, 21 does hit Victor, or he does hit uh, POTUS, uh, and you take five stinging damage from the wasps, POTUS. 
And the insects attack Deerock with bites and stings of all kinds. Fifteen, however, does not hit. So once again, they aren't quite sure what this orc is, so they kind of back off a little hesitant because you did a lot of damage to the snakes and they kind of pull back for a second and don't manage to bite you. So with that, Alexander, it is your turn. I'm not sure how serious to take these snakes. Alexander lights, or, uh, what's it, ignites his sword, and you can see it glows brighter than it normally would. How close uh, is, uh, how close is Victor? As you ignite your sword, you hear that voice in your head. Well, a fine cattle you got a into. Boy, you sure can get us in a mess. There's a lot of these things, you know. Yeah, don't you think we could go somewhere else? I'm activating Divine Favor. I don't know if I ever set up a macro for this, and this is very difficult to do, trying to uh, work off the touchpad. So... Swarmed for bugs, I'm going to stamp through um, some of the crawlers directly in front of me, trying to put some distance between myself and Victor. And of course the baby came out and decided to cry at me. That's okay. It's, <laughs> from from one of the huts comes the creepy, creepy, ghostly sound of a baby crying. No, that that usually ends with girls crawling on walls and. Is it tight? Here, what have you been eating? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, and you are attacking the insect, the crawling insects, right? Yes, and all right, I swam all it three times accidentally. And okay, uh, the first two definitely hit. The third is not there. I have three attacks. I only have okay. two. And it obviously is not a Also, each hit also does an additional D four uh, radiant. Okay. And there's two D4 radiants. But it's got it already on there. 13 and 10. Oh no. I have multiple things that are giving me okay. the, the extra radiant. Okay. Or no, but I need to save some trouble over here. Alright, so let me add up how much is done that might wipe out the swarm of insects. Let's see. 13. And, oh yeah. It wipes out the swarm. Let's see. Is that 13? 23, 20, 29, no, it doesn't quite, okay. Alrighty, POTUS. Alright. I believe we're going to, um, And um, it's like all of them then, okay. So let me do three, uh, four wisdom saves here. Insects. And it's a DC 14. Oh god. The insects rolled a minus one. They are running like mad. Uh, the poisonous snakes. Um, the one on the left rolled a 13, they are fleeing, and the one on the right rolled a 7, they are fleeing, and the wasps, without wisdom, yeah, they're all fleeing. <laughs> Who's the king of the swamp now, Bertrand? <laughs> Victor! You may call yourself the king of the swamp, but I am the wild man of the marsh, and I remember my roots. And I raise my shovel and 
grip the Gulthia shaft that is a uh, the staff that is a shaft and slam it down into the water. He grips that shaft so hard. Yeah. And then, you know, after gripping my shaft, I just erupt all over the place with erupting earth, and there's no way that DC is right. Um, should be DC 14. I don't know why that's coming out wrong. <laughs> Victor, I want a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, yeah. There's, just this, there's just this explosion under the insect. Um, he, doesn't, he doesn't have the stamina, he just came to battle too early. What's the, radius? What's the radius on that? It, it is a 20 foot cube, so it likely it likely hits more targets in addition to just one swarm. It's it pretty big. Yeah, I basically consider them pretty much all under you and around you, so it's, uh, they would be more like that, something of the sort, where they're all close in. Now, don't forget, everyone's willing at a plus four on all of their, I believe it's all of their saves, because of uh, an aura that our paladin has never mentioned that he has, but I am mentioning! Just in case we have to make a save on the <laughs> fingers. <laughs> now, what does the um, erupting earth do when it succeeds? Uh, let's see, so, um... They have to make a dex save against DC 14, not 11. Um, and uh, the, air, the ground in that area becomes difficult terrain until cleared away. Okay. So basically I just completely messed up a huge 20 foot on each side square. All right, all that will do at this point is it will slow down their retreat from the fear. Keep them in range longer, perhaps. So now they're running away. Mm -hmm. Flying you know, up into the air and getting destroyed. <laughs> Let me roll their decks real quick to see if any of them actually saved against it. But uh, let's see, that is snakes. So I roll two of those. Well, and it's half damage on a save. But flying is immune to earthquake. Yeah, the. Well, uh, no, because uh, stuff erupts up out of the earth, it'll still hit flying stuff. Pokemon joke. 20 foot cube, it goes up 20 feet in the air. But it's a. It, it, I actually did have to check the spell before to see if it only hit stuff on the ground, though, so it's a good thing to bring up. Oh, my Pokemon joke was topical. <laughs> yep. Uh, Your Pokemon joke was ineffective. <laughs> the only the only ones that got half damage was oh I only rolled no that's I'm still missing the wasp uh one the snakes on the left only got half damage so let me let's see sixteen damage for all except the snakes on the left The, all the crawling insects and beetles are exploded by the earth as it erupts. They're, basically all their dens and everything explode all over them, and they disappear. <laughs> I wave my shovel around. Good riddance! I think that's okay. the first time I've ever used that spell. Actually, maybe I used it once on chat. I'm not sure. And I ask you this every week, but I will double check. I'm certain I know the answer that it is no, but damage does not upset your fear. Correct, Dippo? Uh, he had to go AFK for baby aggro. Okay. Uh, if the frightened target takes any damage, it can repeat the saving throw, ending the effect on itself on the Ah, uh, yes, so it can. So... The uh, all of them took damage, so they need to rethrow their wisdom. Okay, so one insect. The oh nope, the insects are gone. Take that one off. Um, one one wasp. And two snakes. Left and right. The poised, uh, let's see, the wasp, yeah, they all failed. They're still, they're still <laughs> fleeing. Yeah, screw it, not even worth checking. Two, six, three, they all failed. 
Okie doke. Um, now, the other question I've got to look at on his spell is if they are fleeing from him or all of you. Uh, Frightened specifically doesn't make them flee, it just means they can't move closer and they have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. So technically they're only frightened of him and they aren't required to move away. Okay, very good. So that answers that question, so... Walking Encyclopedia number two. Thank you. <laughs> and with that, Vlad, it is your turn. So are they running away or are they just kind of hovering, hovering ending? They are, they are not, not moving able. away from any except him. They will try to move away from him, but they are all under you and through you, so that still gives them a lot of chance, and they can't move very fast, so they would not be able to move their full distance away from him anyway, because they can only move 15 or half, whatever they 30 and, like, yeah, 30, so they can only move 15. Is this worth spending a third level spell slot on? Probably not. I think, mm. I think I'm the only one that's ever who's taken their damage yet. And one of the one of the four swarms is down. I I took out almost a third of one of the. Yeah, there's no need to blow any spells. Yeah. Um, right, so no need. No need to nuke them. So I will cast Sacred Flame on the swarm of snakes that Yurok was attacking. Okay, the ones on the right. It is a DC take the sixteen dexterity saving throw, or take nine radiant damage. Okay. Nine. And it is snakes. Dex. And eight does not make it. So they take nine damage. Let's see what they've got nine. left. Yeah, there are still. There's still. Let's see. There. There's still. A little less than 20 snakes remaining. <laughs> Excuse me. Still a little bit less than 20 snakes remaining in that hissing, writhing pile of poisonous snakes. But you've taken out quite a batch between the group of you. And Dirac, it is your turn. Um, where is my character sheet? I keep lo losing it. <laughs> All right, uh, I am. Rinse and repeat. Yeah, I left it in the swamp. Yeah, I'll rinse and repeat. I'm gonna attack uh, the same group of snakes. Very good. Do I do I still see snakes in that group? Second here, uh, seventeen ten. Yes, but there's probably less than ten of them now remaining. Uh, I'll go ahead and just. See if I can't finish them off again. Ooh. And with that, I should do it. Yeah. Wait. No, you didn't hit them. Oh no, you have yeah. you have advantage. Right? Uh, do. No. Do I have he advantage? doesn't have. Or if you're talking about the fear, he doesn't have advantage. They have disadvantage. All right. So th they can attack me, but they have disadvantage. I don't yeah. gain advantage. Okay. Right, so, so you yeah, missed. Like you, you missed on that one. I figured. All right. It was worth a shot. Right. Okie doke, and with that, the poisonous snakes at, uh, in that location pull back and rear their heads and attack at you, but they are attacking with considerably less force than they had, because there's not many of them there remaining, and they have disadvantage as well. So let's see what we get here on the one attacking you. <laughs> And actually, 17. What does that do? It didn't Nothing. hit. Nothing. Okay. I'm 18. Yep. So they missed. And the other snakes will attack uh, Ipotus. And there is more than half of them remaining. So we have Ipotus is 24. Yeah, he's back. Uh, and it is a 24 attack for 8 piercing and 12 poison. Uh, roll a uh, con save DC 10 for a POTUS. 
All right, you take the full 12 poison damage, so you took a total of 20 okay. damage from for, those snakes. For, for those watching at home, um, you can, in fact, with a plus 5 modifier, fail a DC 10 save. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, do, it, does, it does happen. Oh. Hold on. Did you add your paladin aura? Are you within my aura? It does. You, you can't do it. it one You're a paladin? I've got paladin levels. I've okay. got, uh, what's it? I'm not sure which one would take president because mine is bigger. Just really <laughs> want to say that. <laughs> Uh, well, you're gonna have to show us if it's bigger or not. I don't trust you. Mm. Even if it's even, like even, even if it's plus five, it, it would still help. Did you roll yeah. Two. Well, uh, yeah, I rolled a two. Oh, you rolled a two. Never yeah. mind then. Yeah, you had to make a. Um, he already has his save. Uh, you do you already have your aura mixed in? Yes, I already have my aura mixed in. Oh, uh, never mind. Oh, because I don't. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, um, so that was a fail. You took twenty damage altogether. How much poison damage? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. All right, and that brings us to. Let me take the insects off the page. If we don't need that, brings us to the wasp that will move in on Dirac and try to sting him from behind. And there's move more. Than on your girl. More than half of them, so we use that, and 15 is not enough. They uh, miss! And... They're just like trying to sting you and can't get through your muscle. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Alexander! <laughs> it's, all, it's all my flexing. Oh. I've made a point, uh, or Alexander, uh, is disgruntled that he's having to swat at bees of all things and swings around his lightsaber bug zapper. And it, the the saber is letting you know that he considers it beneath his dignity as well. He uh <laughs> he completely agrees. <laughs> and the saber are both grumbling. You can always hear the sword. Yeah. Yeah, he's just like yeah. can't you do something better? All right, let's see. Um, um, what are okay. what are you? Which one are you attacking? The swarm of bees. That is a hit, both of them. So let's see what we've got there. Twelve, twenty-four, and six is thirty. The bees go away. Like moths to a plague. Yes, I know there wasn't any mobs there. Yes, it was appropriate. <laughs> Come on! Now you Sometimes have, you have to make jokes. Sometimes only to make snakes jokes. remain <laughs> hissing. Like bees to a flame. Yeah. Epotus! Okay, see the snakes. Epotus looks down at them and just shakes his head. <laughs> And the 26 is a hit. And the 11 is not, so... Uh, and you attack the snakes on which side? The ones under you? The one I'm on top of. Yep, okay, so six damage on them. It still looks like more than half of them are there. There's still a bunch of them. Retroactive question. The snakes that were chomping on a POTUS uh, rolled at disadvantage, right? Yes. Okay. And the, um, let's see, Victor, it is yours. Alright, um, let's see. I am going to go ahead and, uh, throw some fire at the snakes. Uh, work. 14. It's a real shame that these things don't... Um, we don't have an advantage on it. 14, yeah. yeah, it actually hits. Okay, and the ones under you? Oh, uh, yeah. 
Okie doke, so that is... Here, my little friend, have some fire, let me feed this to you. And you see, like, I'm 15... I'm still gonna burn! I'm still gonna burn! You see, like, 15 of the snakes just shrivel as the flame hits them. They just crisp and shrivel up and hiss as their burning bodies sink into the moisture of the swamp. Lad! This is, this is the worst gumbo. <laughs> it cannot be gumbo. There is no okra. I remember a dinner I was at. It uh, says the woman said it was sitting next to us. Oh, I they're serving gumbo. I hope it's the gumbo without okra in it. We just it blinked. Is not gumbo without okra. This is true, it is not. Because the French word for okra is gumbo. Huh. All right, uh, Today I learned. <laughs> yeah. DD Trivia 101. <laughs> uh, I will, I'll just do the same sacred flame on the same one, the same injured one on the right. Okie doke. Only a few of them left. And Got that crap is damage. And it is deck save of what's your dex again? Sixteen. I mean your DC sixteen. Sixteen. And that is this deck. Fail Another nine and that is enough. That is enough to do in the few remaining ones. Now only one group remains. Derok. I look at, uh, it was Vlad that made that kill? Yes. Yeah. He's the yeah, kill I stealer just... tonight. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not worried about that, as long as it's not Sylvia. I, I know, good job. Those snakes couldn't handle these 24-inch pythons. And then I go and attack the, the last group of snakes. Whack! I, I'm, I'm keeping up my wrestling theme. Oh, I have the wrong <laughs> shoot up. Oh, yeah! Yeah, those Ooh, are hits. Uh, well, nope, wrong ones, actually. <laughs> Brother! You should be, uh... Just reckless attack this. Give yourself advantage, there's only one left. I already attacked without claiming it, so... Okay, so did you use the right weapon? Yeah, blood okay. spear, raging, one-handed. Okay. Very good. So, it, would it would have a two H next to it if it was two-handed. Okay, I'm just ma you said oh I did the wrong one, so I wanted to make sure that we were we were uh, what I was seeing. No. Eighteen twenty-six damage. There are very much less than half of them remaining. Wait. Hold on, do I am I at the I, I remember something about. Uh, rolling a 19 counts as a 20 somewhere, or am I you that's can... not the right class? I mean, it's a champion thing. The champion archetype for the fighter rolls would, on 19s and 18s. Yeah, you would, you would, you would have a specific class feature that does it. It's not like a default. Thing. I, I must have read it for a different class then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say there's a. Uh... It's a hexblade thing that involves that, but it's rare. No, it's the one that he's Enjoy thinking it. of is that, moment to murder some that feat uh, that you can get for a fighter thing or whatever that is allows you to have a crit on a 19 or a 20. Yeah, I, I must have read it for a different class, so yeah, no, ignore that. Okay, and the one remaining swarm rears up and attacks a POTUS who's in the dead center of this swarm and it has less than half so and come on come up come up all right um at advantage it rolled crit at disadvantage it rolled a nine it missed you know, I was debating. I'm down for this. <laughs> I was debating casting Bane on these things, but your fear really made it unnecessary. 
<laughs> Save the spell slot. I'll get it back after chilling. Alexander. And like a uh, famous saint from the stories, I shall rid this land of the snakes. That is a hit. Ignore uh, that first one, the first one's the wrong button. So, 16 and 25. Yeah, you wipe out the remaining snakes. And you are out of combat. Alex whispers back to his sword. See there, that line, much more sanctimonious. Makes you feel better? Yeah, I felt so. so. Alright, who got hurt? Not uh, many. Alex looks himself up and down. Not many. I did. <laughs> he photos says like he rips a snake out of his... <laughs> he it. He's got, it's got like, it's clamped onto his arm, and he just like pries the mouth out and throws it away. I I pull off snakes as well that couldn't bite through my skin. Oh, he right, pats so... himself down and is totally fine. How badly were you hurt? Um, my. Max health is 66, I'm at 41. So pretty oh, decent. Dude. Yeah, I think I'm the only person who took damage. I think so. Oh, yeah. that was a good workout. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too old. Much as I tried, it yeah. didn't even do what I was trying to do with it, but that's normal. Oh, that's good. I'm um, getting too old for this shit. See, I got attacked by the insects in real life, though. They're coming for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went and killed them, though, so it's cool. Oh, God, now, I went to a window with a small hole in the bug screen. I'm screwed. Okay, so, Apotis gets 5 plus 3 for the improved bandages as 8, and then add 8 to it from the level, so it's a total of 16 healing. Thanks. I will then pass you a a single good berry, which restores four more hit points. Does that require a short rest to do, or is it just... What? Uh, the bandages requires a short rest before I can do it to you again. Uh, the good what? berries are just something I can do. I have a potential of 20 good berries per long rest. It's because I cast it... Okay, so what I've been doing is I cast it the night yeah, before. I got you, I got you. I got you. Okay. <laughs> My and with that, me. I'm going to shift your viewpoint a bit. We are going to move out of Theater of the Mind into more of a battle map. And you will finally get to see the size and scope of this. Now, I will warn you, you will need to zoom in on the area where your itty bitty tokens are. Like, zoom in big time. This is a big map. Oh, oh wow. it is. That's not terrible. Uh. <laughs> First we killed the bugs, now we become the bugs. Pretty much. Lost. Okay, I'm gonna shrink this down. Yeah, this map this isn't phallic or anything. I don't see it at all. <laughs> Looking for four cool guys to play D and D. Nothing sexual. <laughs> <laughs> there are five of us. There are five children. children. Several wild and crazy guys. <laughs> five children. All right. So we came from here, right? No, the path behind Victor is where you have come down. These, okay, those and... are all the sunken houses that you came between as you came along the village. Let me zoom out for the people so they can see what all you've traversed. So you can see that this, this tadpole <clears throat> that is uh, 
here is the area that you were able to see as you came along the path and along the river. The river is to the right and it is get growing quite dark. Now it is not yet nighttime in the rest of the world. It is probably only about four or five o'clock, but you are in an undergrowth that is so dense that it is, is as if it is night. The road has passed between all of these houses and is, is under the several inches of water that you've been slogging through or on top of, as the case may have been. And this circle here that you see just below you is the goat pen that has been attached to, the, um, to your family's manor, Vlad. Um, there are nine goats in the goat pen moving about and there is no gate in the goat pen it is a completely enclosed uh, fence about five feet high so it is not something you could step over easily but five feet high with no gate and you can see your family's manor just beyond it there We'll open just a little bit more of this, kind of square it off here, so you get a little more and feeling. And this of... is the tree, the bow tree up here? Yes, the uh, the huge, thick tree that looks like it's been carved into a hut, the, the uh, cypress that stands up on its roots. And I just realized my video has been completely off. Let me redo that. I don't know how that got off. I just opened up my video and realized I haven't been on camera, um, which is fine, except that I was making hand motions that nobody saw. So we will try to shift me. I don't know how that shifted. Probably has to do with something I was talking to you about earlier, Apple, that the camera wasn't properly zooming in. Always something. Mm -hmm. no our setup, I try. Genuinely guaranteed to be having at least one error. It's just crazy. The advantage. Not even a complex setup. It's just like three programs, and just they refuse to get along. Yeah, and it's it's just yeah multiple things that want to fight with each other. And not having a crew to be watching this behind the scenes, I wind up with craziness because I can't watch everything. Okay, so now that our little behind the scenes conversation has ceased, has, uh, ceased uh, we were making our way up to the manor last week, right? Or yes. last session? Yeah, you were headed towards it. You saw the manor and you recognized it. And the ghost that you met as you entered the village back by the first house, uh, which is where Sylvia ran, by the way, when she disappeared, um, the ghost that appeared of your father uh, pointed west and said beyond the manor. So basically, you know that you have to move to the manor or to something or other that is beyond it. And he related the story of the woman of the village that Strahd attempted to corrupt and the fact that they had to kill her because she was already turning. So they, um, they killed her and brought Strahd's anger down on the village. So you are, that part. yeah, you are moving towards the manor, which is here with the gray area, and um, the the hut, the um, big cypress hut, is up here. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, Vlad will continue to move towards the manor then. Very good. I had you in front on this particular picture because you were rushing forward trying to see what had happened to your family's manor last week and so I put you up further That's towards fine. the front. Uh, Derek will follow closely. He wanted to uh, take a look at the goat pen. Uh, 
possibly see if he could determine if that was recently made or if it's an oldish looking pen. All right. From where you are right now, you're a long ways from it. You're... Oh, yeah, no, one, once we go get closer to it is when he wanted to inspect it. Yeah, this is a very large map, and those squares are, I believe, a hundred. All right, well, I'll I'll mention it again once we uh once we start moving. Is it just walk straight up the hill, or is there a path? There is a bit of a path going up. Uh, it is raised perhaps fifteen feet out of the muck. It has it was built up probably in the old days. The river would occasionally flood, and so most of these houses have been built somewhat on higher ground and with stilts under them in order to accommodate the occasional floods that would occur. So this is a slightly ra uh, raised area, and um, the uh, you have to climb up a little bit, but it's not anything terribly difficult. You'd be able to do it before too long. I also point out, I had mentioned the that scattered all about the area, you notice there are scarecrows stuck on wooden pole crosses, like uh, raised up out of the muck as well. You know, not concerning at all. I Those will look at them with my detect magic vision. Are they magical scarecrows? There is an aura about them, but they are not moving. Do I know the school of magic, or does it not have a school? Um, they are animated of some kind, whatever that school of magic would be. Let's stay away from the scarecrows. They will probably come to life and try to attack us. Probably. As... As uh, Dirac gets closer, give me a survival or perception roll for what you want to know about the fence and the information related to that, Dirac. All right, let's go. Oh, here, let's open up the chat. And survival, yeah. Um, you can tell that some of the posts are old, but most of the posts are new. And you are able to spot that on top of every one of the posts, every one of them, there is a human skull. I relay the information to Vlad. Yeah. Someone, someone is definitely here. That are fence these looks fresh. Quotation mark skulls, or are these like? very time-worn they've been here a long time and were just dug up for decoration a variety some of them look quite old and some of them look recent i'll continue to relay this information then someone is here i don't know where but that those that fence that holds the goats that has been worked on and it looks like some of the skulls look fresher than the others maybe the, the skulls goats. look not on I was about to say that, yeah. Are these cannibal goats? <laughs> cannibal oh, goats? They, they, they couldn't they possibly. Not us. <laughs> oh, no. The goats from Mir came. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do they look like the uh, uh, the rabbit from Monty Python? Ah, <laughs> do they, do they, do they, yeah. uh, their faces are all red. <laughs> Big Pinty fans! Um... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, they just, they look like regular human skulls, and they uh, do not look like they have been, the bones don't look gnawed on. They look as if they are just... Okay, so the goats are regular. Dead. I'm uh, I'm going to cast Speak with Animals, just to throw a wrench in things. Okay, it takes ten minutes to cast that, so... No, it, uh, I'm just going to cast it normally, which is an action. I'm not going to ritual cast it. Yeah, I, I'm the only one that can ritual cast it. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess you can it too. It. It's just that I, I only have that option. I, I can't cast it like a spell. Yeah, okay. so I, I go over and I kind of 
I, I lean on the fence and I say, uh, "Hey, bud. Uh, good, good evening. Good evening, my dudes. Hey, girl, how are you doing? <laughs> how, how are you kids doing? They are kids. Bad. Bad. Why so bad? One of and to the, the rest of the group, I just sound like that, that, that. <laughs> one, one of the goats reaches out its nose and nudges the neck of uh, one of the goats next to it. That. Is something wrong with your neck? Is someone bitten you? Roll perception. Uh, All right. I, I did uh, get time to cast uh, to ritual cast. I I think he's insulting them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm challenging them to mating rights. And <laughs> <laughs> wow, it is a tradition yeah, yeah. from my homeland of New Zealand. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I you don't, you don't have. Was, I think there. you missed it. The line is back there. <laughs> oh God. Okay. I meant you just cross the line, but I see how that can be confusing. But yeah, <laughs> no, you did. They're, they're... Oh, I actually got both instances of that. That was funny. <laughs> you know what? I'm done here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! For Sylvia, now we put this. <laughs> We're dropping like flies. <laughs> You're dropping like fry, like fries. <laughs> fry. You people do look like fries to me. Sonia. <sighs> um, and when he points at it, uh, Victor, you notice there are numerous cut marks healed for the most part. Some of them look like they are healing. Um, but there are cut marks on the necks of the goats, all of them. So cuts, but not bites. Correct. Hmm. I say, uh, who has been doing this to you, kids? Baba. Baba. Oh, no. Baba has been cutting you? Yes. Oh, no. Why does she do it? Don't know. Takes the blood. I can figure out. They're goats, or if they're just pack a day smokers. <laughs> Can any both? Well, no. See, this would be a pack a day smoker voice. Poor yes. Kalo knows yeah. dose. <laughs> <laughs> when when does she come to cut you? Every night. Has she been here tonight yet? No. Okay. So what we do? We disguise ourselves as goats. I can literally do that. And we lie in wait. Uh, so I uh, I turn to the group and I, I tell them, bah, uh, 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 sorry, uh, <laughs> Baba is here and has been cutting the goats every night. She'll probably be here tonight. She is here, not from the tree? I, I would have thought that she lived in the tree. Well, even if she lives in a tree, she keeps she seems to keep these goats to cut them for something. Well, uh, can I make some sort of... I'll cast iron to myself. And then can I make some sort of check to see what sort of religious practices might involve goat blood? I wanted to see that as well. That sounds something primitive. That maybe it is we didn't know. not a religion check. And what did you cast on yourself? I cast Guidance. I add a d4 to any ability check or attack roll. I'm okay, I just didn't minute. hear what you cast on yourself. Um, Alright, very good. Uh, it would be Arcana. Oh, I probably wouldn't know it then. Fun. I, uh, I turn and ask uh, the ghost. Uh, 17 total. Is, is Baba normally alone, or does she bring people with her? Just Baba. I uh, I nod and I uh, 
I thank them, and um, I, uh, let's see, uh, I don't actually have normal rations. I want to give them something. Uh, There's plenty of dead creatures back there. <laughs> yes, because goats are definitely known for eating snakes. We can definitely find out if these are carnivorous <laughs> or not. Goats eat like anything. Yeah, that's they're true. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, if it's, uh, if it's uh, plant based, which... they'll eat it. Or if it has, uh, the reason they're known for eating tin cans is because it frequently has beans, bean flavor. And I kind of like gather that. up some nearby brush as I'm still kind of talking to them, and I say just real casually, like, uh, "By the way, uh, where those skulls come from?" Be full. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> well, yes, but were the skulls still in bodies when they got in there? In where? People came, people died. Ghost are my new favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you kill the people? Do you also eat people? No! <laughs> okay. If you do, it's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> I totally get it. I do too. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a lifestyle thing. choice. I can't help it. Did Bravo put those skulls there? Yes. She put in just the skull, or was there uh, skin on it? Uh, some of them had pieces of skin. But only a little. Not like a whole head. Not really. Pretty rotted. Oh, that is very sad. And <laughs> give them some grass and stuff. And they happily start munching on the grass that you toss over because there wasn't a whole lot of stuff in there. It and looks like they ahead. looks I, like I they were probably the fed group. like a day ago and they've eaten most of it. Yeah, as I'm kind of feeding the goats, I uh, I tell the group that uh, uh, these uh, these skulls seem to be some sort of leftovers from Baba. She just tosses them in here, apparently. Uh, the well, the you said the skulls were on top of the pen, right? Like the mounted on stakes. On each of the stakes of the fence, there is a skull. It's like oh, a okay. hat. I it was just it's like a hat it. on each of the stakes. That is a skull. I just envision like little. Top hats and newspaper hats on top of each of the rotting skulls on top of these fence posts. No, you gotta you gotta get microtransactions for those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seeing that uh, uh, Victor is starting to feed these ghosts, I will start using Druidcraft to just make more grass and such appear inside the pen. It's real grass. You're making it's it real grow. Real Druidcraft. I just make it grow. Okay. So I'm thinking we should probably hide. I'm th what I'm thinking is that we explore this manor, and when Baba comes tonight, we ambush her. I also Where think she, that she, she might, in which case we ambush her while she's might be sleeping. She might be a vampire, but I'm not so sure. In which case, and he turns to Victor, if she is a vampire, stay. At least 20 feet away from me. Yeah, I kind of guessed that. <laughs> 30 feet, sorry. 30 feet away from me. You know what? Just make it 40. It's safer. Uh, in any case. Better safe than sorry. In any case. We go in. If she is a vampire, I do my holy... Shenanigans on her. We kill her. If she's not in there, we clear the manor out, find the book, wait for Bob to come to cut these uh, goats. I would not want to lay siege to the tree unless absolutely necessary. 
Oh, my Arcana check. Did that reveal my D? Uh, total seventeen on Arcana check. Did oh, that reveal yeah. anything? Oh uh, yeah. Just a second. I gotta get something up here. I like how we both forgot about that. Yeah, there was so much going on. I was starting to give you an answer, and then we got distracted. Ghosts were more important, so don't worry. The conversation with important. the ghosts was going on. All right. Um. Uh. The. Uh, you recognize that there are certain practices that are considered less than holy practices by which people use blood for various rituals. You aren't certain which ritual is being performed with this, but certainly there are numerous things that the blood could be used for. It could be summoning something. It could be used in some kind of transformation ritual. You know of probably is 10 different ritual, things where blood is used. Is there a ritual that keeps someone younger? Not, say, die of old age? Yes. She may be using the blood to keep herself from dying from old age. But that, that this is all speculation. Our main priority is to find the book. After that, we can deal with Bob Lasagna. There we go again. Just ten more hit points every time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Vlad starts leading the way. Uh, any input from any any ideas from anyone else? If we do plan to ambush her, we need to be very stealthy about this. I can make us very quiet very quickly. That's good, but that also means that you cannot use your magic to swing open doors willy-nilly. <sighs> that is a big ask. <laughs> we we were doing fine with Bone Grinder I like until big you asks opened the and chest I cannot with the lie. magic and then it alerted one of the witches that were upstairs. We Would need you? to be we need to be smart about this. This one if this person is as old as they as we believe, she is gonna be very powerful. We want to have every advantage on, against her. Would you prefer to open the doors, Derok? Yes, Derok will open the doors. I I didn't hear you. I I, I saw you talk something. Uh then lead the way. Oh, okay. Then yes, Derek will lead the way. And I don't know which way. It, um, then I when I, so I, I look. I'm looking around. Then I look to you. Uh, which way is to a door to this to your house? I gesture towards the, towards the big ass manor immediately to our right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's that way. I mean, uh, you would I don't vaguely... mind opening the doors. I just need to be led to the correct path. Right. It <laughs> it opened and make open doors. It originally opened to the north. You can see a remnant of a stairway that led up. Okay, so I will gesture that way. I will also cast guidance on Durok. Hold on. So it lasts a minute, but it's a cantrip, so I can just keep doing it. Uh, it adds a d4 to any ability check or saving uh, attack roll that you make. Okay. Not saving throw. Uh, do we want to go that way? That's close to a scarecrow. Why not just blast a scarecrow? Because it might awaken or alert. I mean, yeah. Is there any other entrances to this manor? It's pretty much in ruins, and so you probably can get through the wall in several places. The openings that you see there are pretty much where the wall has fallen down. So, like, uh, I, I can kind of see these. Are those openings? Yes. The okay. The wall is basically crumbled in those areas. The El Tazara uh, Manor is one of the few in the village that actually had the lower portion built out of stone. And the you can tell from what remains of the crumbling second story that there, it was made out of wood, but the lower portion was stone, and the stones have basically fallen upon themselves in several locations. 
All right. So, yep. Uh, are there holes big enough, or do we have to make a hole? No, there are huge. If you measure them, you can see that they're probably 20 feet across each one of those holes. They're very, right. very large. Uh, before I step in, I want to make sure there's no traps or anything going on around the yeah. the holes, the entryways. Give me a perception roll. Which you can add a d4 to. A d4, you said? Yes. All right, this one's actually going to be kind of important. And it's a can chip, so I can just get so a total of 14. You, All right. Yeah, you don't see uh, anything that looks like it would be any more dangerous than the fact that some of the stones look unstable and maybe you'd have to watch your footing a little bit. All right, oh. so I'll... Oh, I have a really what? high perception. I have a really high perception. In the future, just let me check the traps. Okay. We'll do that. Uh, I'm going to test the ground first before I start putting my weight on it. I'm going to I should probably also roll maybe a stealth cuz we we are trying to be quiet about this. Your choice. Yeah. I'll I'll go ahead and roll stealth. Oh, if I can get the sheet back up again. I will recast guidance. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely need that. I'm going to climb. <laughs> Not doing too good, but it's better than a zero. So are we going with the ambush? Uh, I think we're creeping through these ruins. Currently, yeah, we're... If she's in here. Yeah, if, if she's, she's in here. In... If Sorry. she is in here, we jump her. If she's not in here, we get the book, then wait for her to come cut these ghosts, and then we jump her. I'll turn into a bat and lay low for now. Lay low or lay high? There's no roof on this uh. manor, by the way. <laughs> the roof has caved in? Yes. Okay. Uh, Vlad will cast guidance on himself and also try to creep into the house. And I need it, which will reduce Deluxe Stealth back down to 11 because I have to concentrate on myself. I can only have it on one person at a time. Sure, not a problem. I don't think it's going to matter. Oh, snap. <laughs> and Dirok is oh, in the lead. Get a four. Dirok is in the lead, correct? Yes. It's... yes I'm, I'm okay. stepping in first. As far as I know, it's Dirok, then Vlad, then whoever, and with Victor doing overhead surveillance. Yeah, remembering my last time in a uh, decrepit house or whatnot, I'm going to be making sure I'm testing the floor so that I don't fall through it again. Um, I'm going to give a roll against that real quick. You're not going to have to roll high. <laughs> well, you did give yourself uh, uh, guidance. You did get a four. Hey, you did get a four. Yep. So now me and Dirac are equally bad at stealthing. <laughs> Just kicking over rocks. I'm, I'm, on I'm legs. You know, it, it's his armor and me breathing loudly, pre thinking I'm breathing pretty quietly. <sighs> <sighs> oh, stop you know, it. you know what it is? I'm doing the sneaking song. Do, do, Stage breathing? Do, oh no. Do, 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 as you step inside, <laughs> uh, you notice, and Vlad particularly notices with no roll, uh, he begins to remember how the floor was laid out, and he remembers there was a small cellar that probably housed wine, but he was fairly young, and he doesn't know exactly what was down there, wouldn't have paid much attention. Um, and you can see under a little bit of rubble that there are indeed some um, steps going down towards where you remember the uh, cellar to have been. That is most likely a wine cellar. I mean, uh, that is most likely a wine cellar. Because we're trying to be sneaky. <laughs> do, 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 wait, what? A, a wine cellar? This is probably a wine cellar. Okay. I, I 
like, so probably 100 feet away, can definitely hear this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, All right, let's go to the wine cellar. Do, 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 I will do. turn around <laughs> and ask if, and look to see if Apotus and Alex are bringing up the rear. Alex is just kind of sitting there watching. Come on. <laughs> I just flutter along. All right, so how many people are going down, are heading for the Stellar, stellar Seps? Yeah. Stellar Cellar. <laughs> how many people are uh, going down the Cellar Steps? If I were to be standing about, say, near the wall, near enough that I'm not yet in the house, and I can, you know, lean and... Alex wants to kind of set himself as a, uh, what do you call that, uh, lookout. Just so we can see if anyone's coming. A nice long conversation with the sword. Uh, you're paying attention to whether or not anyone else is entering the house, correct? Basically looking up the path from the path, or from behind us to the sides. How yeah. far you um, are you are focusing on at? outside the house, correct? Sure. From a good point of lookout, um, how far away are the stairs? From the edge of the wall, it looks like they, uh, this mansion is probably larger than it actually would be, um, but it they probably are 20 feet from where you came in. Okay, so it's not far. Close uh, enough I could rush in if necessary. Right. All right, Alex is just going to kind of uh, keep a lookout and whisper in an actually whispered voice, uh, I'll keep a lookout. I don't hear him over my uh, sneak song. At which you point, Tom Cruise comes <laughs> rushing <laughs> in. <laughs> the bass, the bass set <laughs> Um, all right. So you're heading down the the cellar steps. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay, just By the way, that, that was actually a really good idea, uh, Jason. I didn't even think about having someone be lookout. Thank you. I was looking if up to see if I could use Unseen Servant for that, but not quite. If you hear us start screaming in agony, come help us. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> if you hear us start screaming in agony, come help us. Or if you do happen to see someone, come get us. Yeah, um... Alex wants to be the big damn hero and come in and rescue them and save the day. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's already part of the plan. All right, okay. So we descend into the cellar. And who is ahead? Because the steps are, are only like five feet wide, so Derek's in the lead. Very I'm, good. I'm taking point. Uh, like I said, I'm opening all the doors and whatnot, checking for traps. All right. Uh, I had already rolled for this fact related to your stealth roll. You are surprised as four enormous snakes strike out from the side of the steps as you come down to the bottom steps. Out of the darkness of the cellar, you have four giant snakes. Let me pull them up onto visual. Is and, uh, Go ahead. I will invoke uh, feral instinct. All right. And it does what on their reaction? You uh, can... If you are surprised at the beginning of combat and aren't incapacitated, you can act normally on your first turn, but only if you enter your rage before doing anything else on that turn. So right. basically, I get a normal turn as long as I act uh, rage first. All right. Two of them would be in range of Vlad, and two of them would be in range of you. So they all strike out attempting to bite you. They are large green with brown stripes, uh, things that um, Dirac would immediately recognize as being a very poisonous kind of snake. So I, was us... trying to say, would I have been able to see them with my high percep passive perception score? No, this is a stealth roll. This was a stealth against stealth. They were attempting to surprise you. And you guys rolled really bad on your stealth, and they rolled really good. We did, admittedly. Okay. The two on Dirac roll a 16 and a 22, so the 22 hits. 
for seven piercing plus seven poison damage. Ouch. Uh, did did we roll initiatives? Not yet. You're about to. This is a, this is the surprise round. Now well, the ones because on... I I do get to act in the surprise round. Yeah, yeah and we'll take care of that. But this is for in general. This is a surprise round. So you may get an action in the surprise round, but this is not the regular initiative. Give me just a moment. And related okay. to Vlad. If it roll, both of them missed. A 7 and 11 do not hit. Um, yeah, that's where I work. <laughs> all right. So both of those uh, missed you, Vlad. Now... Dirac, what are you going to do on the surprise round? I am going to rage, and then I'm going to attack... Uh, you said there was two snakes that attacked me? Yes. I will attack the one that did actually hit its attack. All the right. one that rolled the 22 against me. Very good. Now, and then, do I get extra attack on this, or do I roll an attack? Not on a surprise, no. You get it. Not on a surprise, a, okay. It's more like a reaction. Okay, then, yep, uh, so let me hit the blood spear. Ew. Not a, probably not a hit. That is not, not a, a hit. hit, nope. That is not a hit. All right, now, um... You can attack again. I extra, can. Atta he, extra attack. He does get it on a surprise round? Because he's taking it on his turn. It specifically says, says when you take normally. the attack action. Mm -hmm. When yeah, I take the right. attack action. That's okay. right. The normal would, would cover it. Yes, so you do get a yep. second attack. That's right. So let me roll and bring this back up. There we go. That's that probably a hit. That one yeah. hits for 11. Okay. That is not correct. Too much space. They were alerted. 18, 18, yeah. <laughs> that was... That's so I, I just thought about it. A bard and a cleric make an excellent musical combo. You can have the cleric start plus. using commentary to make a ground rumble for the bass, and the bard can just use minor illusion to make the other sounds. Seven. So <laughs> make an entire rock that. band. So it would only be or six. make a very convincing Eight illusion, right. like if it was a gigantic thing attacking. You're not I wrong. Me correct these. I had the wrong hit point amounts on them. And why does that have? Oh, because I must have picked the wrong one. All right. Let me try to correct some hit point issues here. Just a moment. Yep. The game We're... is set for three people as a team and you guys don't get the three people monsters <laughs> you get the maximum uh were apotus and victor following us or yes. were they further behind yeah. i'll okay. have you roll initiative in just a moment as soon as i correct these snake hit oh, points I was... Yeah, I was just going to mention that if they were further behind, then, like, my, my first missed attack would have probably alerted them. I'd probably, like, hit a wall or something. Speaking of which, I like how we said, if we start screaming agony, come hit us. Come get us. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Well, I, I, mean, I, I haven't screamed yet. I guess I did rage. We All right. Literally um, started making noise. Um, everybody roll initiative. That was pretty good. Yeah! So, uh, you guys told Alex, okay, if we start screaming, come get us. And he said, okay, immediate slash cut to you screaming and him playing his Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hold on. There's a, there's a, uh, freaking squirtles. These pancakes are so good. <laughs> Oh, Riz, it's a joke only you and I will get. <laughs> that, tr that tree over there is a pocus stump. <laughs> Why is he getting no? Alex wanders off. It's odd, I'm not giving any roll for the snake. 
Let's try adding it directly then. Snakes are peaceful. We'll wait till later. You could also just have them all go on the same initiative. A very brief snake story while things are getting fixed. I have a pet snake and she is retarded and cannot cat or cannot eat. She she's an idiot. Um, so I had my little dead mouse I was feeding her, and she caught it with her tail before she caught it with her head. <laughs> like her tail wrapped around nice. it like it was going to be a branch. And then she's like, oh, there it is! Is okay. Victor going to roll for initiative? Yeah. Uh, Brazilian rainbow boa? <laughs> Meanwhile, Victor's just like, do you have any tools? <laughs> He's playing Go Fish with the goats. <laughs> okay. Oh, Alright. We are set up there and I got all the problems corrected there. Um so Dirok, you have the first attack against these snakes. Basically, um, you are looking, you are on a narrow cellar, wooden cellar stair. You are in front, almost on ground level. Uh, Vlad is right behind you, only a step or two behind you. There is one snake directly in front of you, one snake to the side of you, and two snakes on either side of the stairs that are attacking Vlad. Is there any area that I can move freely without, you know, taking any attacks of opportunity? No, they pretty well got the whole floor area covered, so you would have to move through snakes in order to get further away from the stairs. Your best defense actually is pretty much on the stairs where you are. You can, Vlad uh, can reach was... two of the snakes, you could reach pretty much any of the four. Uh, the plan was to try to make room for maybe a POTUS to come down to you, help fight. And obviously you would be able to move uh, in such a way that you would stay within the five feet and wouldn't take any attack opportunity, but you would have to stay yeah. within there. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant, is I, I wanted to move in a way to try to make room but stay within range of uh, all the snakes because I'm obviously surrounded. Yeah, so. uh, you can move up to 10 feet around these snakes because they have a 10-foot range of attack. Okay. Um, I'll do that. I guess I'll move, like, I don't know, like right here. Would that be pretty fine much, to um, get yeah, room for? Yeah, this okay. is pretty much just description. You're just basically kind of stepping into the grouping of snakes in front of them. Uh, and the two in back would not have attacked you. The two in front, you are remaining in range of, so you're fine. Okay. And I am going to keep attacking at the one that attacked me. I am offended that it decided to land a hit on me. And, I and just you gotta have to rage, right? I've a, I'm already raged because of the, the surprise round. Right. I wanted to make sure that that was taken into effect. Yep. So we're gonna and we're gonna hit twice. Those are both hits. At, so, at the offending one, the Okay, the one on the lowest here will be the one at the bottom of the stairs, so it will take the full eight damage or uh, no uh, nineteen damage. You actually wipe that one out. That is what you get for attacking me. Who else wants some? Okay, so question about how this room is set up. I made a little drawing somewhat above the manor next to the tree. Is that pretty much how the room is set up? How, uh, since how I've, I'm zoomed way in, let me make a drawing closer to where I am oh, for here. my purposes. One second. Here. Hey, there you go. I can just move take the that off. Thing. Take that off, please. Thank you. Let me show you what you've got. You've basically got a narrow stairway, and you've got, let me swap to a green circle here if it will cooperate. There we go. You've basically got, yeah. 
that's too far up actually I'll do snag that and move it here but then uh, what I was trying to ask is that Derek is at the foot of the stairs where yes. I'm at the top of the stairs no you're just and... behind him right behind him and you basically have I'm just about to show you hang on And Dirac has basically moved through these snakes here, like this, to the other side of them to remain, to prevent an attack of opportunity. So you have a situation where um, he's standing just behind those two snakes. You still have a snake on either side of the stair attacking I'm you. I'm about right here. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Let's see, is protection from hood... These things die pretty easy, right? Yeah. That was 19 points. I just I just killed it. Yes. I just killed one in three hits. Uh, that's pretty easy, yeah. I will... run up the stairs. <laughs> you will get attack of opportunity. Yep. Two of them. Yep. There you are, Klingon warrior. Okay. <laughs> All right, Vlad runs back up the stairs and... Uh, okay. uh, the first one hits for eight piercing and 13 poison. Second one misses. Ooh. I forgot that they do hit like trucks. I did take 14 damage while I was not in rage. I just took 21. Okay. On my way up, I will slap a POTUS with uh, protection from poison. Now the snakes <clears throat> get their real attack, and since Vlad has now moved out of range, they all slither in range of Duroc. Bring it! They all slither around there, and four attacks. One. Two. Wait, four? Yes. I thought I killed one. Oh, yeah, you did. Three. Let's see, you killed the one that... That one actually is gone. Come on. That one is gone. So three, you're right. One. First one missed. Second one hit. Third one... Hit. All right, the one who rolled 19 gave you 18, eight piercing and eight poison for 16 damage. So minus eight. The one that rolled 23 did a total of 18 damage, seven piercing and nine poison. So uh, nine damage. Is there any sort of saving throw against this poison, or is it just you take poison damage? Yep, this is a con save. You're right. It's half on a save. So let's see if we can subtract okay. some more. Give me a con save from... You'll have to give me two con saves. Uh, and it is a DC is 11. That one saves. And you need two from Duroc? All right, so whoop. Ha -ha. yeah, and that one. Ha -ha, again. You only needed two rolls. Uh, that one was okay. That was yeah, that was Vlad. Okay, so Vlad, you all, all three of those rolls were saves. So each of you will have the poison damage. So let me go back here to. I took uh, thirteen poison damage. Right, so you took over six. Six, right. So uh, you only took six poison damage instead of thirteen. And on uh, Dirac, you took, uh, you total before you took 8 plus 9 is 17. Uh, you all, uh, let's, see, let's see, you had that. I'm going to have to start back. Can you put yourself, do you remember how many points you had before this started? Because I'm going to have to uh, I... it. I took a plus eight, or I took a minus eight and a minus nine. I took 
Uh, okay. A 16 so and the, an 18. Add those back in so that I can give you the okay. corrected forms. All right. All right. Oh, so that's not the a plus. first. The add four twice. The first one you took eight piercing and now only four poison damage. So you took 12 on that one, which would be six from the first one. Minus six. Second one, you took seven plus four is 11 with the subtraction. So you took five damage on the second one. There we go. And it is Alexander's turn. Sorry, my system lagged a little bit whenever I try and tab. I'm figuring this out. So, um, seeing as I assume that's just an arbitrary picture that was drawn up uh, uh, near me. Yes. Um, Alex, hearing the clamor and commotion, pockets his game, charges in. And the shouts, you guys literally took, took you how long? Two freaking seconds? <laughs> you mean, can't do without me for two seconds? It, literally two seconds. It, it's, it's, you you it's hear us. the sword, <laughs> you hear the sword mutter in your mind. Hi, oh, stupid idiots, aren't they? <laughs> it's a good thing I don't believe it can talk. <laughs> um... Seeing as it's kind of a melee down there, um, I'm a little worried about the shots, but I'm going to take two shots at whatever is closest to Jira. Well, Derek's kind of surrounded by snakes right now, and other than that, you have a pretty clean shot. Oh, okay, Vlad, cool. Vlad ran up and out of the way. He had right, he did. I totally, I thought there was a third person down there. Anyway. There, let me, let me put a, uh, a... Just a dark figure here for Dirac, so that you know it's you've kind of got this situation where basically the stairs are the red, the snakes are the green, and Dirac is the dark blue or purple one. Oh, so I have a clear plot, uh, uh, what's it, clear shot no matter what. Yep. Um, uh, I don't really know what to target, but I'm just kind of kind of spray and pray at the one that's very most directly in front of him. That is a miss. That is a hit. So by directly in front of him, you mean between him and the stairs directly in front of him? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Okay. Very good. I believe and... there's a minor effect. Give me a second. Oh, I forgot to add this. Add a D4 to that, or add a 4 to that uh, force damage. A straight 4, not a roll? Yeah, I forgot to add my modifier to that okay. uh, a macro yet. So, uh, to the roll or to the damage? To the radiant, to the damage. Alright, so the one that hit then would be 13 damage on that snake. Check. All right, and have you done all your actions? I ran up and I pew pewed. Okie doke. Epotus? It's a minor action. I scold everyone. <laughs> Epotus? Okay. Um, well, I have immunity to... Uh, Poison, so we're gonna. Is it the poison or is it just disease? Uh, you said I thought you slapped me and gave me poison. Something that's resistance. Ah, whatever. Okay. And advantage on saving throw. And advantage on the saving throw. Okay. Well. Uh. Yeah, he probably is gonna try to squeeze through and get up near Dirac. Yeah, you'd be able to get in back of the snake that's right at the foot of the stairs. Be able to get within kinda range like, of it. Kind of like, kind of like, so kind of like there. 
Yeah, more or less. If you look at the green and red uh, diagram that we've got there, and I do this, I'll give you a color for a POTUS. He's a, uh, what color is he? Uh, I just have that green for the poison. Yeah, but I'm just saying so the POTUS give him is yellow. Yeah, trying to give you something like POTUS's color. So you'd be kind of like standing here. And so he's going to double stab the, uh, the dudes. All right. Uh, are you stabbing two snakes or one? It's just the closest snake. All right. One in uh, right there at the foot Middle of the one. stairs is a hit for five damage, and that's just enough to take him out. So you are now down uh, to two snakes. Yes. And, and, the, and then yeah. uh, I will cast um, Shield of Faith as a bonus action on D-Rock. Okay. Plus two to AC. Very good. Victor! Right. What is Victor going right. to do? Victor is going to flutter his way over to the bats and then uh, turn back into his normal form and uh, try and... You said uh, flutter your way back over to the bats. You mean the snakes? I, I mean the snakes, yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, and it might have been the goats. I'm, I wasn't sure. I'm going to try and uh, beat the hell out of them with my shovel. <laughs> Turning to the Christianity. Oof. Oh, it's not good. Uh, that I think is a yeah, that's a miss. Okadoke, Dirac. I am gonna attack this one, the one to my right, since I'm assuming I'm facing the stairs. Yep. And I just gotta get my sheet back up. Yeah, one one. and two is two misses. Not yeah, I'm. Yeah, there's no, not there's no helps or anything on there that have uh, advantage that I know of. So nope. those are misses. Okay, we are up to Vlad. Vlad will kill the Vlad. snakes. Vlad. So we have two snakes, one of which is partially injured. Right. I'm not. I'm trying to get it to clear off so I can tell. For some reason, it's, I'm getting, oh, it's those dots, that's what it is. Uh, let me see here. Uh, yes, the one on the right is quite injured. I am going to use Sacred Flame. There is some Save. decent damage. 16 dex. Uh, it's a snake, that's so probably pretty dexterous. <laughs> it may be dexterous, but not enough to beat it. It only rolled a 10. So you vaporize that snake. It just kind of like turns into flesh smelling smoke. Ah, oh, bang. More incense. And it is the remaining snake's turn. Who turns and strikes at Dirac. Let me get rid of the smoked snake here. And he will fight at Dirac. Lots of dice. E sixteen is not enough, is it? I'm at I'm at twenty now because yeah, of the because of faith. Plus two. Yep. So if that is a miss. Alexander! They can't stand up to the, these pythons! And Alex, Alexander is at the top of the stairs shooting at it. Is that what I got right? Uh, while I'm still at range, I'm going to be using, uh, you know, but you're, the you're energy at, beams. Shoot Jason, sword and, Jason yes. you're at the top of the stairs, am I correct? Yes, I am. All right, so I want to put a little circle here just so we have some idea this is your circle here so that we have some idea of where everybody's standing okay oh, i got my own little circle 
this is your circle. There are many like it. This one is yours. <laughs> so I could jump down the stairs and try and land the snake, but Alex is a pragmatist, at least uh, for now. He's going to keep firing shots down that way. As soon as I can get my sheep to respond. I have double roll 20s up tonight, so I've particularly got craziness going on when I try to roll anything. Um, sword. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that, that effect. All right, so both of those hit. And... 12 and 5, uh, there is, the snake is pretty well destroyed. Basically, it's got just barely enough left to be trying to bite at Duroc's foot is about all that's remaining of it. There's almost nothing. He pretty well destroyed it. Epotus. Uh, well. Second verse, same as the first. Say hi to the next one. That is, those are hits, and you yeah. absolutely chop into little tiny mincemeat pieces what remains of that snake. You are out of combat. <sighs> Great. I'm, I'm going to keep concentration. Just let me know when about 10 minutes in universe has passed. I'm keeping concentration on the uh, resistance to poison. Lasts for an hour. Very good. I'm keeping concentration on this game. Good thing. Always good. All right. I am going to heal myself up. Oh. Alex is going to say that to the group. Do we. Are we going to. Uh... Are y'all going to keep going in, or, uh, like, are you going to take, open up the door and have another pile of snakes land on you? I'm there, already, I've already no... ignored him, and I'm going back to Super Sneaky Song. Uh, and, uh, the, the cellar is now open before you, now that you're not paying attention to snakes. The room is about 30 feet square. It is, uh, it has posts that support the floor above which is a ceiling for this cellar. And the posts are fairly rotting, but they are still staying in place. The bottom of the cellar is in about four inches of water that has leaked through from underneath. And uh, there are about six rotting casks in the room that are open and their, their various pieces of wood are laying about so we're rotten standing wine. in sludge water and rotten wine. Yeah, if there was any wine left there, it would be mixed in with this water, yes. But basically, you are uh, doing it as you pick up a board and look at it. You can barely make out the words that say, Wizard of Wines, Champagne du la Stomp. Why well, do I feel like that's going to be super important later in the campaign? The thing uh, is, I don't, I don't want to stay in this cellar for too long because she made a point of is, the the beams being really rotted. Oh, well, that's that's one uh, thing I'm asking about. Is there any other doors in the cellar, or is it just the one room? It is just the one room. It just goes down into this wine cellar, and that's it. Suddenly, right, the background want... isn't quite so JPEG. <laughs> if we want to take a couple of minutes, I can set about with... Uh, mending to try to repair these beams. That would be a good idea. I don't want the ceiling above us to fall down on top of us. If POTUS, the ten minutes would go by while they are examining the casks. It was a fast ten minutes. Alright, Dirac, you're uh... I'm you're back down to 18. Yeah. Alright. So I will take... Uh... So you said those four beams, right? Yes. All right, I will take eight minutes to uh, cast mending twice on each of these beams. Very good. Each casting takes one minute. 
and as they watch, they can see the wood kind of heal itself and, and fill in the weakened and rotted spots where the water has got given it rot. I will also look for the place that the water has been seeping in from, from the walls. You can pretty well tell that basically you are under water level in this cellar, and it is just kind of oozing through the walls in numerous places. Just, just you can see like so droplets. So repairing the mortar in one specific spot is not going to do anything. No, it's just oozing up from the earthen ground and through the earthen walls and plaster. Uh, in you can see droplets of water forming all over the wall and occasionally running down the wall and dripping into this pool. If we had to. This could be a good place to camp for the night. A good choke point. No one will just take us unawares. Yes, camp out in this water and wine and whatever. I can make the water disappear. Okay, that would make it better than this would be a good place to camp out if we need to. There is not much I can do about <laughs> the smell, however. I'm not worried about the smell. I'm more worried about the noise for when we move around. The group of you can pretty well guess that even though the darkness here is um, hard to judge, it probably is getting along towards 6 or 7 o'clock now. I want to find the book at the very least before we make camp. Yes, agreed. Alright, so uh, Vlad will Get, make his way back up out of the cellar and continue to search the house. Keep also, in mind that I also have... Uh, go ahead. It's not down here? I thought we were going down here to look for the... Nope. Uh, I thought it might have been down here, but it's not. Oh, it, okay. This is just the one room. Well, do we want to check those wine casks? The wine casks are pretty open, as I described them. They're pretty well just individual boards. There's not much to hide anything. I want to inspect them, see if there is anything hidden along with any of them. Did you find rotted wood? Yeah, it's basically <laughs> rotted wood. She described them pretty like, good. There's, there's something with them, I think. Well, they, it just basically that these are indeed Wizard of Wine casks, if that has anything to do with what is going on. And I, 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 I actually I do will want to say inspect. one OOC that Vlad is very focused on his manner and has, I'm not going to repeat it because I've said it three times, but um, his father gave him rather specific instructions. He said it was behind the manor. I just want to see if there's anything interesting in the manor before we go to look for the book. I, Beyond I do, was what he said. I do want to clarify though now. I want to inspect the, the casks. I want to see if I can determine the age. The casks, uh, give me a nature roll, but you don't need very high, probably only about an eight. Yeah. Um, the, the water has rotted it, so it's a little hard to tell, but you can judge from what you know of how fast things rot and so forth. These, are, these casks are probably only 25 years old, something like that. They're not ancient. The wood hasn't rotted enough to be centuries old, but they are probably a couple of decades old. Vlad, how old are you? Ah, uh, I'm he's thirty like, years old. He's thirty. Thirty. Hmm. Something to keep in mind. Let's look for the book. So Vlad makes his way what? back up. What? What was up, Victor? Uh, uh, if you're not going to wonder about that, I won't. Never mind. What, the Derek has a thought? <laughs> the Derek just randomly asked him how old, how old he was. Yes, oh. I'm legal. Well, <laughs> 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 hold on, hold on. Me not that kind of orc. <laughs> <laughs> Me not that kind of orc. 
Work, work. Quit poking me. Hold on, <laughs> Duroc. I need to cast protection from disease on myself first. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I want a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just keeps slithering down a very you. snaky slope here. Yes. Tonight has been something else. Yeah. Alright, so uh, Derek goes back up and into another room in the manor. Yep. Uh, he said it was behind the manor. I just want to see if there's anything good inside the manor. Uh, I, you, I did hear you say something else, Fate, but I didn't hear what it was. Because Beyond Gore talked about that. the manor. Beyond the manor, yep. So is there nothing there else is interesting inside the manor? Not in particular. There is one room, as you can see there, that square, uh, that uh, when you open a kind of broken doorway into it, uh, it would have been the major receiving room parlor area of the manor. And it is in fairly good shape as far as walls. Like the rest of the manor, it has no ceiling, <laughs> no roof. All right, uh, then I will leave out of the, the beyond the manor. Not behind, but beyond. Beyond the manor. Yes. And my detect magic vision has not picked up anything either? Other than the scarecrows that have a kind of eerie aura around them. Okay, I will move beyond the manor. So Alex, during all of this, didn't get a chance to go down to even look at the wine. Well, they're casks. They're they're emptied out and rotted and whatnot. Not implicitly. Alex didn't get a chance to check. He's more thorough than you guys. He has more kids to care about this. <laughs> Actually, no. Alex is basically giving up drinking, so he will uh, resist it and move along. It doesn't even look like good wine. It's probably spoiled. Taste of vinegar. <laughs> I don't know where Monarch came from, but. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. I would be following along, Vlad, making sure, you know, he's not caught unawares. Uh, I'm. Looking for any uh, sort of I'm casting guidance myself, because by this time, the detect uh, or uh, protection from poison has probably vanished. Uh, I'm casting guidance myself, and I'm just looking around for any sort of place that the book could be hidden. Um, how long are you going to look? Tell you how many results I give you. Uh, say about two hours. Okay, so it would be around eight or nine o'clock at night. Clearly, nighttime now. That. Uh, okay, I'll that, with that then task. that would cut it down. We'll say it's only uh, eight o'clock, then, and um, uh, you search all through the trees to the south of the manor, and you don't find anything except a few places where you see some very old bones that were probably left from the battle that you remember, Vlad. It's not near the manor. Is it further away? Is there any sort of other building around here? Not anything but what you see, those walls and everything. The you Basically, that revealed portion is the entire raised portion of the manor. What if there's some place underground where it's kept? Giving you a little bit of guidance, he talked about other things that were related to what had happened and where the book was hidden. And if you can remember some of what he talked about, it will give you some idea of what you're looking for. Well, the problem is that 
Michael has failed his intelligence check to remember. <laughs> this all has only been about an hour ago for Vlad. Right. Basically, he told you a story about why Strahd attacked. He told me that and... it was because Marina was corrupted and they decided to kill Marina before Strahd could finish the corruption, so he got mad and attacked the place with the monsters. And that she was she was buried to be remembered. I don't remember this part at all. I do remember that. I just didn't well, I just now remembered it. Did he say where she was buried? He just said there was a monument. Uh Vlad looks around for a monument. In the immediate area you do not see anything. All right, standing on this hill, do I see any sort of? Uh, let I'm me, helping them again. Let me see. It's I've, tree, I've got it? to check something to see if there's even a chance. I mean, we're standing on a raised hill that overlooks the land. You would think you could walk around the hill and just get a good overview of the place. And you got a survivalist that's looking for this stuff, or semi-survivalist, I should say. But to be fair, it's also getting dark. Yes, and it vision. is dark, and it is quite a long ways away, and all so you have to go on him is he kept saying beyond to the west. Okay, uh, it's getting pretty late. Do we want to look for this, do we want to continue to look for the book or wait until, wait for Baba and wait until the morning? Well, both sound very bad. We need to get this book, but we don't know what lurks out there. But if we stay too long and she descends upon us, not having that book would probably make the fight a lot harder against her. But we know what lurks out there if we lurk out there. This is true. Get the book? I say get the book. Get the book. I was not book. thinking that at all, but okay, we'll go for the book. You didn't say anything. Yes, I was you saying we should get, uh, I was thinking we should, you know, wait for her to ambush her, rather than having her ambush us while we're looking around for the book. And so, we are in her woods. Are, is, I'm certain the ghost will tell her. It, the ghost won't kill her, no. He said he was tell powerless. Her. The um, ghost won't tell her, they can't talk to her. Yeah. Um, so are all of you journeying with Vlad towards the west? Oh, yes. I will follow the group. If you okay. believe it's a better idea. All right, I'm going to put you as a group that you are preparing to head out towards the west to find this book. And as you walk down off the mound that the man manor is built on, as you get about 100 feet away, the last thing you hear for tonight is the entire group of goats begin to bleat. It's a good goat. thing we left. Ah. Poor goats. Victor, what are they saying? They're saying Baba. <laughs> Yeah, my uh, my my spell is expired. Well, I doesn't know that. <laughs> he All he right. Talk to ghosts. <laughs> so you are heading west into the darkness of the swamp. Uh, are you still walking on water? Uh, no, it's faded by now, but I can recast it. All right. I'm walking on sunshine. That's about what I thought was going to happen. As you begin to walk down into the swamp and head west, you also realize Sylvia's been gone a really long time. And with that, we will say good night. <laughs> good night, okay, everybody. Future. Night, everybody. Good night. See ya. I'm sure she's fine.